You've definitely seen them on YouTube. There's no way you haven't. And if you haven't, you're missing out. This week, we're talking to Arrington Mercado, also known as the Saltwater Mercs. Definitely a ton of knowledge he's always given in every video. But he doesn't just do surf. Now, he does it all. And we're going to talk to him all about that from the start to where we are today, right here on Finding Demo Surf Fishing. So sit down. It's going to get good. Get that notepad out. Let's get after it. It's early in the morning. You say, see it. Hell, we're just starting recording. We're not even done. Ugh. Now, well, it's a new week. We got some new fun stuff coming to you. And like I said, we started out. We're going to be talking to Arrington today. I've had, luckily, the chance to fish with Arrington. And, um, yeah, he's a real deal. So (laughs) what you guys see in YouTube, that's actually how he is. He's all energy, all go the whole time. He's just, that's, that's his personality. So if you're coming down to the Panhandle region and you're looking for a charter, we're going to get all Arrington's uh, areas here, and he'll tell you all about that. Definitely a great guy to go fish with and a hell of a guy to learn from. So without further ado, Arrington, thanks for coming on the show, man. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Brian. <laughs> it's funny. This week, uh, Arrington's back home, and I'm in Orlando, so it's 9 o'clock here, 8 o'clock there. And I'm like, man, do we really <laughs> want to record this early? <laughs> <laughs> With that music, I don't need coffee no more. Yeah, oh, that's how I feel. Every time before I even play the episode, before I even get started in the episode, I hit the the music button just to get myself going. So, <laughs> between that one and um, the intro for the live with Mike and I for the Panhandle Surf Fishing Report, I'm like, yep, I'm good. <laughs> all right, so um, the YouTube channel name is Saltwater Mercs, but tell me all about your social media here. What are all your handles? Uh, same thing, Saltwater Mercs. Okay, and that's everything from Facebook, YouTube, Insta. Mm-hmm. TikTok, everything. TikTok. Oh, I, can, I have to get back on there and make sure I add you on there. I just started TikTok, so I'm still trying to figure that whole thing out. Yeah, it helps out. It helps out. I'm still figuring it out myself, but hey, you know, it's part of learning. We're not getting younger. <laughs> it's like, I want to go to my daughter and be like, hey, <laughs> um, could you show me how to work this? Because I don't know anything about what I'm doing right now. <laughs> oh man all right so let's talk about this uh, what got you or uh, where and when did you start fishing uh the florida keys beautiful florida keys south florida um my dad used to take us growing up every other weekend out there to be honest with you we did not know much but we still had a great time uh, we would take fish that um nobody that would eat but we would eat because at that at point in time, everything else tasted like fish to us, but it was, it was learning process throughout the years, you know, as the years went by, I got better and learned how to actually fish than to just fish for fun. So it was a learning curve, but we definitely had a family time growing up there. It was just, you know, a good, good time. Yeah, man. I mean, family time is half the fun of going fishing nowadays. Yes, that definitely is. This is why I love surf fishing so much in this area. Mm-hmm. So what got you to kind of play in all the areas? Like I said, I mean, when I did the intro, um, I know you're in the boats. I've seen you shore fish inshore. I've seen you, I mean, deep um, surf. <laughs> you, you, you do it all. But what got you to go into all those different areas for that? Uh, this is how I grew up. You know, we were, uh, like I said, beach fish. And then bo- I've met some buddies of mine. We had a, a good group of friends at that time growing up. And we were just... A buddy went, hey, let's go to the pier today. This is running. And another buddy went, hey, let's go to the jetties. This is running at the jetties. And then I had another buddy of mine that his dad had a boat. And his dad, what he used to take on his boat. And like, hey, you ever catch a wahoo? And I was like, I didn't even know what wahoo was or a kingfish. And <laughs> you know, at that time growing up, you're hooking on this 40-pound, 30-pound fish. And it's it does, it's a thrill. So at that, you know, it just as I grew on, I kept doing the same thing every time i would change it up you know if i did not know how to do it i would learn i would ask you know always those old timers there in in the pier where he's the only one catching that's what i would go to and ask him questions hey how do you do this how do you do that and you know it led me to where i am now 
And the old timers, they're just a wealth of knowledge. And I think that a lot of, uh, I mean, the younger kids are smart. And you see them on, on the fishing and all the pier one. They, they know we're going to tell them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I haven't been tempted to tell Abby, like, hey, I need you to go ask him what he's using and how he's doing it. Yeah, Help me out. <laughs> 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 oh man, that's actually a really good technique. I don't even think about it till now. Yep, well, we're doing that next time. <laughs> so you you moved heavily into the surf. Um, I know you just still do everything, but with charters and everything, and, and you're doing a lot of stuff in the surf and some other stuff. But what brought you? What brought your love to the surf for fishing? Um, as you told me previously, I used to do a little bit of everything. Um, I, before I moved to this beautiful area here in the Panama area, I used to live a block from the beach and yes. And and I used to ride my bike there every day and, uh, used to go to the jetties and, uh, one day it was the slowest day in the jetties and there was this guy at the beach, older guy, and he was just hammering down the fish from the beach. So I decided, you know, I have, I only have one rod. And I went down as I always did ask questions, ask guys like, man, what are you doing? He's like, at that time, I was still in the process of learning how to fish. And then he told me about the mullet run. Something that happens every year of South Florida where you have mullet gather all close to the beach. And he's like, hey, you want to get hooked on a fish on the beach? I was like, yeah, why not? (laughs) That changed everything for me. I mean, completely everything. Get throughout a mullet, maybe two minutes gone by and i hook on this i'm still trying to chase that day that happened i've been chasing for the last 10 years of my life i hook on a tarpon whoa for, for an hour possibly just down the beach and he's like, you wanted to hook on the fish here you go i just couldn't finally after an hour we got him in out my breast was shocked and, like, and i told him myself yep you have brought me to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, I found myself in my first two surf rods, and here I was, you know, trying it out. And uh, brought me back here, and I didn't realize how good surf fishing. People don't understand that the Panhandle area is like a gem itself for surf fishing. You know, just mm-hmm. everything is everything you could catch. On the bridge, you could catch on the beach, you know, just about everything. You've seen the pictures, people catching cobias, people catching kings on the beach. I've caught red snappers on the beach, giant redfish. Just there's everything here on those beaches. I mean, fish got to um, eat, and, I mean, they know coming in, they're going to get their hands on clams and crabs and stuff like that. And, yeah, I mean, we get lucky once in a while. You, you've heard of the cobias. I mean, hell, we had that one guy that caught the sturgeon. I mean, just mm-hmm. out of nowhere. Uh, but strange things happen. But yeah, the surf the surf can provide a good amount of food. That's for sure. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So what? And it is. Oh, go ahead. And it is a relaxing time with the family, with friends out there in the beaches. So it's kind of hard not to uh, not to go to the surf, you know. Yeah, man, absolutely. So what brought you to the Panhandle? Um, I had a little girl, and then um, we decided to move to an area. Um, actually, my. Our father-in-law, my father-in-law, would, had just moved here, and he was saying how it was an amazing fishery, and that's how he sold me the dream. He said, "Hey, if you're gonna, if you love surf fishing, I know you do. This is exactly the spot you want to be at." He's like, "They're catching giants in the bridges, offshore, in the beaches," and he sold me right there. And also, I want to give my daughter a good, um, good area to live in, you know, yeah, man. good family environment. So I made the move, you know, and two years later, I'm here. And your father-in-law is a hell of an angler too. Yes, he's he. <laughs> I yet to beat him, unfortunately. He's probably going to get to beat him, but I'm going to get him one day. I'm going to get him one day. It's funny you say that. I mean, the, the day we went fishing, I went with you guys, and it was just, and you kept telling me, like, "Don't worry, anything I catch, he'll catch bigger." <laughs> it's just like, really? He, he, he's just got that. <laughs> he's just got magic. He's he's got them hiding. He knows where they are. Definitely, he has the knowledge and the t- the patience. I'm a little bit hyper, as you can. As you fish with me, so that sometimes could help and sometimes doesn't help. But hey, you know, it's part of fishing. I didn't even think you were slightly hyper. I just I was like, this is how I always knew you. I'm like, yeah, this is just him. That's cool. <laughs> oh, I loved it, man. Are you kidding? I, I look forward to going to fishing with you again. It, I, I really do. I had a great time that day, and I, I do. I really look forward to going back out with you guys sometime. It, it'll be fun. Um, so while we're talking about surfing, uh, surfing, surf fishing, when you're getting ready to go out to surf fish, what is your normal routine? 
Um, it's all about me for as far as I get my stuff ready to go the day before. It's definitely helped me a lot now, especially when I'm running charters. But um, I'm always looking at the weather. You know, what's it uh, when the tide is coming in, when the tide is going out, what, um, when it's high tide, when it's low tide. I've always used that in the last two years, and it's helped me so much because I, before I was just going out, hey, I'm going to catch fish at this time. But now as you, you know, learn, you learn more about, more about fishing, you start to read the tide, you start to read the, the timing where those fish will be biting. That's really what's helped me um, the last two years a lot on getting more fish. And I tell people all the time, you know, hey, Go three hours before the high tide, you're going to have moving water. You know, you're going to have those feeding frenzies there. You know, that's why it, it definitely makes the change. It's definitely helped me out now. And having the right gear also, you know, having the right gear for what you're going for. That's definitely a game changer. And it's funny you bring up tides. For me, tide's always been like a weird one. Some days that the moving tide is the greatest thing ever. And then there's other days where, you know, like the other day here, we had a, what was a slack tide. And... Mm -hmm. Every, like there was what probably 10 to 15 posts we saw of limits and it was just like it's a slack tide where the hell is this coming from it's it just out of nowhere people are like yeah i got i got my limit of pompano oh yeah i got a lip i've got spanish no oh, i got whiting it's like that, that's not normal <laughs> why is this working so well for you uh, so that's what throws me throws me there so you like to fish with the tide marks yes definitely uh I didn't believe it at first, and this one of my buddies back home was like, man, once you start fishing the tides, you're going to catch more fish. It's just, you know, it's like when we're of ourselves, you know, it's 5 o'clock, they're hungry, you know. Tide is that time frame where they they get hungry, they start feeding, and you want to be out there, you know. I tell people all the time, you want to be out there when they start feeding, when that tide's about to change or we're going into high tide. It's going to increase, increase, definitely, um, your rate of catching fish. Okay. Makes sense. I'll start doing that better. I was um, I was just fishing down here at uh, Canaveral, and I went into uh, shut up and fish just down the road here. Uh, and I walked in, and Lee's like, looks at the tide for me, because I always go if I'm going somewhere different. I always go into a local tackle shop. I'm like, all right, where's the biting? Where's the hot spots? Where's the cold spots? What do I need? And uh, she was saying, you know, you're about to be on the low tide, so it's perfect for Pompano. And I go. Oh, how's it perfect for Pompano? I'd figure that the low tide would be the worst. She's like, oh, no, the sand fleas. They can get to them better. I was like, didn't know that. Okay. Sure enough, caught a Pompano. I was like, all right, well, you're right when you're right. So, I mean, I, I get it a lot for this side because they got the two, the six, and six, uh, six hours on and off. With us in the panhandle, we've only got the, we got one a day. <laughs> we've got high and we got low. Mm -hmm. So, um, with, with our movement, I've always worried that that wasn't enough, but from what you're telling me, it really is enough. It's definitely going to help you. And then to, to me, it's definitely has uh, um, increased my chances for sure. So, you know, this is something I've stuck to. And so far it's been working really well for me. And for a lot of my charters, it definitely, that I do definitely need it for them. You know, they're there to catch fish. And I want to make sure I put them on fish as much as I can. Yeah, man, absolutely. So when you actually get to the surf and you're you're looking for a spot, what are you looking for? Uh, well, yeah, what are you looking for to pick a spot? I go to the highest part of that area, put on my glasses, and look for that deep cut. That's my number one thing. Even before I have everything set up, my bait, anything, I just look get on top of that hill and um, look for that deep spot where that cut is. And you know, usually you will find a fish there. Another thing that I do is uh, throughout the week, if I am going to fish a new spot for a new charter, especially in the Navarre area, which I'm still figuring out, um, I go the day before, a few days before, and then scout the area, look for those spots of deep troughs or deep cuts um, where the fish will be passing by or hiding. And that definitely helps out. Okay. So cuts and cuts and holes. Yes. Nice, man. Nice. So... When you're there, how do you bait up, and what rigs do you use when you're going out there? I usually use the same three rigs. Um, first, a Carolina, not a long leader. Um, I don't, the reason I, I don't use a long leader is because in the surf, you don't need to hide it as much. In the pier, you do, in the jetties, you do, but in the surf, you want to make sure you get casting distance. So I actually use small leaders, you know. Um, 
and I use a dropper rig. We, some call it a chicken rig. It's just a dropper in the middle. That's to keep from the crabs from biting on your on your mullet and on your other bait. And the other one is the my pompano rigs, which I use a frisky fins pompano rigs. And that's basically the three rigs I have set up, you know, for what I'm get, going for. Okay. What about bait? What, what, what do you have like a specific feeling for bait? Is there, you know, like, I always use this, or do you do situation dependent? Where do you go with it? I stick to three, and it's always worked for me. You know, when you're using five or six, it, you just you're spending too much time on bait. I use fresh dead shrimp. If the sand fleas are big, I cut them up in half just because of the the scent. You know, fish go with scent. Um, and some cut up mullet, and um, if I'm using fresh shrimp, I usually tip with some fish bites on the top, and that's it. You know, okay. usually uh, it's all about the scent for the fish. They smell it, they they see it coming running. Fresh set the shrimp, fresh set um sand fleas, and here we are. You know, hold on for the ride. <laughs> yeah, buddy. So <laughs> when you're when you're targeting reds. Um, do you have a specific rig set up for reds, or do you just kind of still follow the same ones, the chicken rig, the dropper, or the Carolina? I actually, uh, when I went to uh, Virginia, North Carolina, maybe a few months ago, I learned this from a guy. He's His leader size is maybe um, about 12 inches long, his leader size, 5-0 hook. Um, the reason why they do it up there and I learned it here is because reds are are – are not leader shy, so they don't care about the length of the leader. They're not a, when they're hungry, they're feeding. They do it just about anything. I've seen people catching them over there on wire. So I tell people all the time, make sure you put in a small leader and nice size five hole hook. Cut up big chunk of cut up mullet or filleted mullet, and just chunk it out there. And the reason why we he taught me that, and you know, we as you go on and learn more and more about targeting these fish, I tell people all the time that of uh, having a small leader will help you in casting distance especially when there are the second bar you can't reach that area that casting distance will help you so that's why that's how i do it now that's smart man and, mm-hmm. but it's well i mean a 12 inch leader with a five aught uh yeah it's smart i it got me recently um it was rogue reels that got me into the the bigger hook on the reds and i always thought he was like i thought he was using too big a line and then i you know he explained it to me and you're even confirming it. it's like look the line doesn't matter for them they don't care just they want the food exactly and you can get some fresh dead uh, fresh fresh dead mullet even oh my god that is candy for them <laughs> that oily stink man it just yeah. it does something to them yeah definitely the oil they're very um they're very oily so They'll see it from a mile away, and when they're feeding, you'll catch two or three or four. I actually caught my biggest last year. It was a 48-inch red. I thought it was a shark, man. I was just, I was astonished. I was, I was more in shock. I couldn't believe my eyes. You know, I grew up <laughs> catching red, and to catch a red that big in this area, just to this day, I still talk about it, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, as you should. I mean, that's a serious trophy monster right there. We get we get bulls, but damn, I mean, something that big? Oh, yeah, you, you got to talk about that for sure. Uh, do you, are, are you throwing rigs or jigs at all in the, in the surf? Yes, I throw, uh, in the summertime especially, uh, silver spoons, top waters, and my favorite, my far favorite jerk baits. Oh, okay. What, what, what kind of jerk bait are you playing with? I mean, if you, I don't want a trade secret from you here, are, are you just, is it all different types or do you prefer one company? So, um, Frisky Finn's made a very good, and he's, he's actually been a big supporter for my um, channel since day one. And he, he started talking about colors on your pompano rigs, how they match the water. When it's dirty, you use green. When it's a little murky, you use orange. When the water is clear, you use pink for the fish to see that, especially the pompanos, right? So I actually started matching that for my jerk baits. You know, when the water is clear, I used to like to use those pink jerk baits, long six inch jerk baits or eight inch. Um, when the water is dirty, I use darker colors. And when the water is mid, I use about orange colors. And uh, definitely has helped me this year a lot. Man, that's awesome. I never even thought about that. I, you, you've seen it as well as I have. You know, half of our, well, I'd say three quarters of saltwater anglers are for surfing fishers. We, uh, we, we take our three or four rods out, throw out the set rig, sit back, and watch the show. But, uh, when you're doing, are you doing jerk baits on your when you're doing on set rigs, or is that when you're doing your walk and throw and scouting? I usually set up three rods. If I'm fishing on myself, I usually set up three rods 
um, one for a pompano rig, one as a Carolina, and one to dropper. And I'm standing right next to uh, my rods and just throwing that jerk bait, throwing that spoon, you know, to see what's out there right now. You know, especially around this time of year where the jacks are going to be running by in the mornings. Um, the reds, you know, you can sometimes you can sight fish those reds coming on the first bar. So those jerk baits or spoons will definitely give you a chance on getting them. And when it's a bit slow, you never know if that uh, jack comes out of nowhere and hits that spoon or that jerk bait. Yeah, I'd love to talk about your jack rig, but I'm not going to because you showed it to me. And I'm like, nope, I'm I'm not telling anybody about that. That's brilliant. <laughs> but I I have seen what happens when a uh, when a jack grabs that rig and uh, goes for a run real fast. And it, <laughs> man, that was like, Whoa, what happened? Oh, that happened. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that just showed right there how it is when it comes to you know your your pro your, your, the things you've learned over the years. Like, hey, look, if I combine this, this works. Yeah, it's just, and I thought it was amazing. We, we weren't fishing. What were we? Ten minutes in the water, if mm -hmm. that. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I looked at that. I was like, "There's no way that's something. how would that work? That's like two for one." <laughs> oh, oh, it's gone. <laughs> I was really sad too when that when that rig got broken. I was hoping that we were gonna get that guy. Yeah, well, there's some big uh, jacks that blow up in the morning. I tell people all the time, you guys want to hook up some jacks, throw those little spoons, those jerk baits, you know, those swim big swim baits, about six inch paddle tail swim baits, and hold hold on to your uh, seatbelt and your rod. Yeah, Chip, uh, I was just, I know you went over fishing with Chip when you were over here. I uh, was just talking to him the other day when I went up to the the sinker guy garage to grab some gear. He was showing me uh, Fish Bites has six-inch grubs, which are monstrous um, uh, for a, a curly tail. And I was like, what the hell are you going to use this for? He's like, you throw it in the surf, man. And I was like, there's no way. There's there's no way. And he explained to me, I was like, oh, man, I've been missing out. Holy crap, I need to start doing this. It, I never really even thought that a, a jig that size would yield such an attack. But he was telling me, he's like, yeah, dude, these are great. You, you're missing out if you're not doing this. Yeah, the reds are running with that right there. And that, first of all, that guy, sinker guy is just full of knowledge. Every yeah, time I fish, he just teaches me something new. I was like, wait, I, I knew this, but I didn't know they did this. I was like, what? Yeah, he's a he's a very smart, knowledgeable guy. So he's definitely, a, every time I fish with him, I learn something new. Yeah. I love that, like, in our community, so many of us are willing to, give knowledge and help each other to catch fish. It's not a, oh, secret, secret, I got a secret. Now, granted, we do keep some things to ourselves, um, but not everything. They, people want other people to catch fish. And he, he's one of those ones that's like, yeah, why didn't you do that? I don't know. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, I have a video coming out. Uh, I have not released it yet because once I release it, a lot of people are like, what the? Yeah. He told me something that I have not yet put out, but it's a definitely a game changer and I'll explain in videos coming up in the next weeks and he explained to me how um how the hook set and how your bait set up it definitely will help you and I I tried it and it definitely changed it for me just because of the way how it was set up so he definitely has brought something to the table to this area and I, I feel like more a lot of people need to follow him more and this is why he makes great sinkers because of his knowledge you know in surf fishing yeah, yeah, the sinker guy is a lot of fun and just tons of knowledge. Great guy. Oh, I could talk all day on that one. Okay, we gotta keep going here. Oh, uh, <laughs> so what made you want to start doing charters? Um, good buddy of mine's, and I'll give him a huge, huge. He's been a good, good. Uh, um, as I first moved here, I didn't know much people, and uh, he had just moved to him himself. My buddy name is Brandon. And he reached out to me, you know, how he said the fishing community helps out each other. And he saw me that I was catching a lot of surf of fish and he wanted to try himself. He had just moved down from Birmingham, Alabama. And he's like, hey, buddy, what are you doing this week? And mind if I join? And, you know, it's just we got on there. And that day was just one of the most <laughs> one of the most memorable days. We got about six black drums, two red snappers off the beach, a red, red fish. It was just and he's like, hey, I have my dad coming into town next week, and you mind if we uh, taking surf fishing? He's like, yeah, man. I told him, you know, just bring him down. We'll go out. It was his birthday, and uh, that same day we had just another crazy, crazy surf fishing day. And it's the same thing. We're running around like madman, you know. Hey, grab this rod, grab this rod, and then 
end of the day, we went home and he just brought it up to me. He's like, man, you should run charters. I was like, charters? He's like, yeah, I've been surf fishing charter. I was like, is that a thing? And he's like, yeah. I've seen <laughs> and, you know, next thing you know, I'm running surf fishing charters. <laughs> you know, and people started contacting me little by little. And then as it moved on, you know, I'm here running 100 plus charters now. It's just, it's crazy. Dude, it has cool. become. So, I'm like so jazzed for you on that because I know everyone I've talked to that has mentioned a charter with you has always mentioned that's a great thing and they've had so much fun. With that being said, hey everyone, it's been 25 minutes. I'm sorry the sound didn't go off because apparently the new sound machine's not working. So my bad. But it's 25 minutes. It's time for a bait check. That's right. Reel that stuff in. Pause this. Go check it. Hopefully you've caught a bunch of fish and you've had to pause this a bunch of times. But if not, it's time to check your bait and possibly change. It. All right, moving on. So what is your favorite part about doing charters? Um, if you anybody that has met me out there, they will know that I I love just getting people on fish. It doesn't matter the age, you know. I've I've done charters for you know a grandma that was her ninety eighth birthday. She was on the ridge here. We brought her, put her there. It's just like exciting to see you know something, somebody getting them a big fish and their reaction. This is my favorite thing, you know. Hey, I did this and this made this possible for this person, and you know, seeing their smiles in the day at the end of the charter knowing that they got on a, a fish of the lifetime or just something they never caught before and it just makes my day nice dude yeah I, like you said i know people love to hurt going on with you but is it is it like anything better than seeing the kids like that smile on their face after they get that monster that even it could be like a 10 inch whiting and they're just grinning ear to ear You're like, <laughs> you did that good job <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's how I get all the time. Even though I've caught a hundred breadfish, a bunch of pombolos, still the same reaction, and that's something definitely that kids, you know, bring in, bring when they run those charters for them, especially, especially if it's their birthday. You know, it's the best feeling in the world knowing that you've helped them on their birthday get on the fish they wanted. Oh man, hell yeah, that's a hell of a birthday present right there for sure. So, what area are you servicing now for your charters? I'm running. <laughs> From Orange Beach all the way into Navarre, um, just because of my, um, I'm flexible with my job, so definitely helps me out. Sometimes I'll be in Navarre, and then I have a client that week that's in Navarre, so definitely my availability in areas as far as I can cover is a little bit better than I would say some people. So I'm very, uh, very uh, appreciative of that. Nice. All right. uh, what made you transition into YouTube? I mean, I know you've done a ton of things here, but mm -hmm. YouTube was an interesting. I always wonder what what made you want to go that route. I was uh, I grew up playing sports, and as I was getting older, I realized I couldn't be playing sports all my life. So I started getting more. And now, like as you grew up, you know, I grew up fishing with my dad. It just brought back that love again. I went out again um, a few years back. I stopped actually fishing for a few years. You know, I was playing sports all my life, and I got older. And I started picking up fishing, and I was fishing even more three or four times a week after work. And I had a buddy of mine, a couple of buddies. My father-in-law actually said, like, hey, man, man, you're catching a lot of fish. Why not get into YouTube? At that point, I didn't know what – I didn't really follow YouTube, and I had a good friend of mine that actually – his YouTube channel was going well. And he said, man, you got free fishing stuff. I was like, hold up, free fishing stuff? Yep, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, man, he gave me this um, – rods and you know you know as we know fishing is not not cheap at no. All, you know? <laughs> no it's really not it's a beautiful addiction you know but as you get more into it more into it, you want to get better better stuff and i just people as i got better and better at people started asking me so i said you know what, what's a better way to share with people how to get on these fish and with knowledge and that's when i started the youtube and you know i've never looked back then now and it's doing pretty good yeah. i'm grateful I mean, you definitely got a lot of good knowledge and stuff you put out there, and your videos are fun to watch. So it's uh, thank you for doing that from, <laughs> from a selfish standpoint. But it's been I think you're doing a great thing there, and I, I hope you continue. I really do. It's definitely a passion, something I enjoy a lot. You know, it's I feel at peace. You know, there, and we all need it. You know, we have so much going on in our lives that we need something to help us relax, have family time, especially surf fishing, something you could do with your kids, with your family members, somebody coming into town. So that's why I love it so much. Yeah, man. Good stuff right there. So has, has doing the YouTube channel changed any of your fishing style or ways of fishing? It actually has, but in the, in the, 
like in a, a greater way because I've met other YouTubers and around this area that I've, I've learned from, you know. And so you start to learn from others and you you mix in your 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 knowledge and their knowledge, and it definitely helps you get on fish when nobody's catching fish. So I would say it's definitely improved my fishing. So I, I'm really grateful about that. Nice man, and you're passing on what you've learned too. So we're all winning exactly. on that one. Every day you learn something new, and it's the thing about fishing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thankfully. But it's funny you brought it up too with uh, how. <laughs> I hate to say this, but anybody that wants to get into surf fishing before you get into the sport, please realize you are about to spend a very reasonable, unreasonable. You're you're going to spend some dollars. Because you're probably going to start on the lower end, which is totally fine. It's totally fine. You can get away with the Shakespeare setup and still catch fish. Absolutely. There's whoa, nothing. Whoa, whoa. That, that, that's what I started out with. Exact actually. same. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> I started out with, I think it was the uh, the eight-foot pier and surf. With Yeah, it was the pier and surf rod. And I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And I was like, and I, I still have it in the garage. And I look at it, I'm like, oh, you sore. So you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Until that thing gets smoked by a big old redfish, and you're like, "Oh, maybe I need to get something better." <laughs> and it's oh, it's the worst when you've got the drag fully down, and it's still peeling. You're like, "Oh, this is gonna be such a bad day." <laughs> Please don't spool me. And as you progress, though, in this, you know, do you need to go buy the three hundred dollar rod? No, you don't need to. Does it help? I mean, it doesn't hurt. Do you know? Do you need to go buy a Van Stall reel? No, you don't. Can you get away with, uh, you know, an Abu Garcia from Walmart? Yeah, you can. But as you progress, you're going to start seeing like, hey, you know what? I might need a little bit more drag. I'm going after this today. Uh, you know what? I need something a little bit more. I need a longer. I'm going to this zone where I need to cast longer. Maybe I need a long cast reel. All that you hear is ching, cha ching, cha ching. It just comes right out of the pocket, and it's just a too fast of a rate sometimes. So, be ready because it's coming. I definitely agree with you on that because you are one hundred percent right about that. You know, I was wondering why this guy's fishing with all this expensive gear, and then here I am with the same gear a few years later down the line. <laughs> I realized what they were, why they were doing that because you know I was here over there at the beach with Shakespeare rods and Walmart rods, and don't get me wrong, they do work. But when you are wanting to get over the bar, when you're targeting a big, big fish, you need that drag system. You need that good rod to get you in the location where those fish are usually sometimes going to be at. So that definitely helps out a lot. And I mean, I could talk gear for days, but why not? We're on the subject. It was funny. The um, We did that casting clinic, Mike and I, um, not too long ago. We brought a bunch of rods out to just throw. You know, and I, I have, not saying I have a cheap setup, but I have a couple cheap setups. <laughs> and you could, you know, we started off on me, and we're like, yeah, you could start down here for, you know, probably a tank of gas, or you can go, you know, go on walking down the line, and, you know, you might be looking at... Uh, a barrel of gas. You know, you just kind of go with the progression. <laughs> but it, we were throwing, like I've thrown my Akuma, and I, or it was the Beach Runner. That's what it was. It was the 11-foot Beach Runner, which was my first rod when I got to Navarre. Um, and it did the job. It's a, I think it's like a $55, $60 rod. Uh, mm. But it, it does the job. And then people are throwing like, oh, this is nice. I'm like, okay, that's a cool story. Come here. Then we walked down to the Ninja Dagger. Then had them throw the daggers, and they're like, oh, these are really nice. I'm like, yeah, yeah, all right, come on. And then had them walk down and throw the 13-foot surf bullet um, that Mark Burford from Florida Surf, uh, mm -hmm. Florida Surf Tackles gave over to Mike to hold on to for people to want to try it. And then they throw that, and they're like, what is this? I'm like, yeah. So remember, tank of gas, barrel of gas, barrels of gas. It's up to you. <laughs> but, then, you know, everybody at the end, it was like, I get it now. I understand why you have all this set up. It's like, there you go. Welcome to my pain. By the way, I want two of those rods. Thanks. <laughs> oh, man. It hurt It hurt the soul to throw. Like, that bullet, and I'll, I, I will happily admit this on a podcast. I'll, I'll admit it in face-to-face. -face. That 13-foot bullet, I'm not a big fan of 13-foot rods. Um, I do have one. I've got an Accios. But that 13-foot bullet, the casting whip and the way that the the way the setup was effortless cast on a two ounce and I think I was throwing at one twenty. Or was maybe it was a three ounce. Yeah, I think it was a three ounce pyramid and I was throwing at almost hundred and twenty yards. 
I'm like, what the hell is this? And Mike's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to cost you, by the way. I was like, no, no, it's not. It's yours. But that would that would definitely be as far as fishing wise, because that, that rod itself will help you. And any of the rod that you will go, sometimes you are going to need that. I tell people all the time yeah. because you could definitely catch palm bundles in the 15 yard, 20 yards. But when they're out deep, you need that rod to get you out there. And sometimes it will definitely be the difference maker on getting fish that day or not. So yeah. Uh, I've told people numerous times, you, know, you can throw a long rod short. You can't throw a short rod long. It, it, and it's okay to have a long one to be like, hey, I'm throwing it 20 yards out. You might get funny looks, but you know what? If you're catching fish, that'll shut them up. Cause yeah, that's usually they come, how are you getting on fish? Then they're throwing, throw, then next thing you know, they're throwing to the 20 yard, you know? So it's just, you know, getting on fish from the 20 yard all the way to, like you said, 120. So it really depends on the day where the fish are at. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's try to reel this back in here. I know you got stuff to do, so I'll get you. I'll get you running here. What do you think the surge to surf fishing is all about? To me, it's the area, of this panhandle. It's all all over Florida now. It's it's easy to do. You know, anybody could get into it. You could be twelve years old. You could be six years old. You could be eighty years old. You know, it just it's much easier than any other type of fishing. Why? Because you can just get on any beach. On the piers and the jetties, they do it a lot, but the problem with that is on Saturday or Sunday, you're elbow to elbow. Surf fishing, yeah. you can just get a grab pair, grab a Gatorade, grab your chips and your breakfast, put the rods down, cast out, and relax with your family and friends and wait for that big fish to pass by. And if the pompons are running, you're usually going to be running around all over the place, but still a fun time. Dude, we are so spoiled in the panhandle because we have so much national seashore and other spots where we're not in front of condos and we're not elbow to elbow with people. I've been very fortunate enough to travel all over Florida, fish different areas. And let me tell you, if my father-in-law would have not, never told me, I would have never known about this area. And I'm glad he did because this is definitely the best for me, from my experience, is definitely the best area to fish at, especially for surf fishermen because it's just... When the reds are running, they're thick. When the pommels are running, they just everybody's out there. And every time that I go out there, you see more and more people surf fishing. So it's definitely something that's, you know, in getting people more to surf fishing. And you see it from every time you go surf fishing. So uh, it's easier, it's fun, and you, and you get on fish and you take home fish for dinner with the family. Good family time. Anybody could do it. That's why I think that's why surf fishing is picking up really – really well with everybody i like that what do you wish a new angler would do before they ever put a line in the water uh do a little more and more research on what you could keep what how to target the fish you know youtube has made it so much easier for people and you know just a little bit more more and I sometimes always, I, I'm always going to see one person out there and I always want to go up to them, hey, this is what you should be doing, you know, as far as knowledge. Because, like I said, I love to see people getting the more fish. So, you know, just ask a few more questions, do some research on YouTube, know your rules, you know. You don't want to be taking home illegal fish, you know, getting a $150 ticket or, or $100, $500 fine. So, just make sure you have your knowledge and as far as the fishing rules, not taking the legal fish and knowing where you're fishing. Hey, speaking of YouTube, I haven't asked anybody this question before, and you know, you're a YouTuber, so I'm going to ask this question to you. Are there any YouTube channels that you're like, hey, yeah, I love these channels. These are the ones I like to go look at. This is what I would say. Check a look, take a look at. And I'm, I'm, I know you're not don't you're not alienating anyone. I'm just asking who you, which ones you like off of that one for teaching and stuff. Me, uh, Lindsay Lohan, Lindsay 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 Lawson. I actually been watching him for, oh my God, about eight years, um, for quite a while, and that's my favorite YouTuber. That's actually my friends like, hey man, watch this guy, and then he's this guy's catching, like he's jacks off the beach, snook off the beach, and he will always show you what he's doing. So that's what I who I've been watching for a long time now, uh, and now that was who Lindsay who, Lindsay Lawson. Lawson. Um, oh, okay. He's real, he's real big, and as you can tell, his channel has grown a lot, a lot. But now, I've when I first uh, moved here, I wanted to know the area. I was actually watching Kyle for a while, 
He's a real cool guy. I met him a few times, fished with him. Um, that's who I was watching when I first moved here. Yeah, I, yeah. I miss him. I know he, he just got married, so we'll eventually start seeing him. I'm actually fishing with him tomorrow. Are you? Nice. Yes. I didn't know he was back in town yet. Yes, we're actually going to be fishing tomorrow. He said he has a little good pump on the spot for me. I said, hey, don't worry. I'll be there. What time? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you had me at Pompano. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do me a favor. Let him know that um, don't be surprised when he gets a text message from me here soon. I'm going to wait till I get back to bug him, but he, I'm eventually going to get him because he's got. He's also had a ton of knowledge to give to people, so it's been. he's been really he, helpful. He's been living here his whole life, so... I, that's why you know I was watching him. And he was getting on pump on those black terms. Like man, I, if he could do that, I can do it too. Let's do it. Let's try it. So now he definitely helped me as far as knowing the areas where to fish and how to fish them. Because you know when you first move to a new area, it's just completely changes how you fish. So I wanted to make sure you know I got knowledge of somebody that's been fishing here for a long time. Absolutely, man. That's couldn't ask for anything better right there. Dude, I appreciate you, Arrington. Seriously, I really do. And thank you so much for coming on and sharing your knowledge and your passion with the fishing world. And Hey, man, I look forward to getting back out with you. It's already been too long, so I look forward to fishing when I get home. Well, you know, we can get on those pompanos, especially in the Var Beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it, dude, this is the second time this has happened to me. The last year I came down for this tournament, and the day I left... I think I was pulling into my mom's driveway and my phone's blowing up from Tony and Matt and all the other uh, beach buzz. And uh, all these guys are like, Hey, the Pompano run started. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I'm here. Uh, what do you mean? The Pompano run started. It can't be. It's like, do it's doing a couple weeks. And sure enough, this trip, same thing. I was probably about an hour. Uh, I, I think I'd just gotten on the turnpike and uh, my phone starts blowing up and I'm looking over and Tony, Tony fish comes out there. Beach Buzz is out there. Justin Reed Fishing's out there. Smitty Surf Fishing's out there. They're all limiting out. And Tony actually puts like, "Hey, weren't you leaving? Weren't you down there the same time last year?" I'm like, "No, no, this ain't happening no more, man." <laughs> I could actually share a funny story with you. I'm on the pier, right, going for a sheephead, and my buddy's like, "What are you doing? Get to the beach now! They're slaying the pompanos." And I was like, "What?" And he's like, "Yeah, they're here early." I'm like, "No, there's not. It's 20 March." He's like, "Yeah, come to the beach." So me and my buddy, we sat, we went over there. We had six foot rod inshore rod and have my some pompano rigs some fish bites and he's like yeah man they're here he looked at my cooler i was like wait what so i cast it out that six foot rod and 10 minutes goes down the line that rod is just peeling drag i was like no way i'm running oh, around my buddy man. we just got one rod one rig some fish bites and we're catching pompanos i was like yep it's that time of year it's my favorite time of the year so you know pompanos are here and everybody's out there right now hopefully a lot of people get on them but should get even better now in April. Yeah, I can't wait, man. I love these runs. They're just, it's never a bad day to get there at 6.30. The sun's coming up. The rods start bending, and you're off the beach by 8 o'clock because you don't have a choice. You, you've already limited out. You have to leave because you're not going <laughs> to catch anything else. As we go all the time, we're spoiled here in this area. You know, We're very, pretty spoiled as far as fish. So, you know, take take advantage right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're coming down here for vacation and you're looking for charters, you've pretty much heard the reason why right here. Uh, definitely look up Arrington on Saltwater Mercs, and like you said, we can get you on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Twitter? You on Twitter? No, nah, no. Nah. Me neither. <laughs> I can't understand Twitter. That's way too much. <laughs> and then <laughs> the Tiki Talk, so you can get them on there. I've I've actually had my girlfriend take care of all the social medias and the YouTube because I have a full-time job too and chartering guys and trying to be a dad. So it's like there's only so much I can do in one day. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've only got so many hours. Uh, but I appreciate you, brother, and uh, I know we'll be talking soon. One thing I'd like to say before I go, anybody yeah. out there, if you have a dream, just go for it. It just – I went for it and – I'm doing pretty good, and I tell people all the time, you have a dream, just go and chase it. You never know what tomorrow leads to. Yeah. You're awesome. <laughs> it's no it's damn true right there. Hell, you just gave me the you just gave me the title for the show. I like it. Yeah. Here we go. All right, buddy. We'll be talking. What? Did I lose you? What was that? I said you have a great day. <laughs> Thanks, brother. All right, we'll talk soon. Have a good one. Yeah, man. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Arrington Mercado of Saltwater Mercs. 
seriously, like I said, you've heard it here. There's a lot of good knowledge. He's got a lot more to give you. If you were looking for a charter, look him up, get in touch with him, and uh, he'll get you there, get you on the fish. And if you're looking for knowledge, take a look at his YouTube channel. Lots of good stuff on there that's going to help you out become a better angler. So I appreciate you coming around. If this episode helped you, don't forget, like, share, subscribe. Get that information out there. If you're not already following Arrington on his channels, make sure you go over to his YouTube and his other ones. Like, follow, and subscribe as well. He's dropping lots of stuff like you heard. And, I mean, it's only going to help you become a better angler. So why wouldn't you do it? But I'm glad you were here. Thanks for sticking around. We'll talk to you next week. You've been listening to Finding Demo Surf Fishing. Have an awesome day. Take care.